Hey everyone, Jim Page, fly fishing for the rest of us. So you've got your five weight, your five weight reel, your five weight line, your nine foot five weight graphite or fiberglass rod. You've gone out, you've caught a number of panfish and bass, maybe some small carp, and you're really enjoying fly fishing. You want to step up your game. You want to, what's my next rod? What's my next step? You'll see, usually people want to go to the salt water. They want you to catch largemouth bass or pike or musky, or they want to go to salt water and catch redfish and black drum and maybe bonefish, um, permit, tarpon, small, large tarpon, jack or belly. Just, there's just a whole world available to you to fly fish for. So what's your next fly rod? What's the fly rod you should get for fishing in salt water and heavy fresh water? Um, You'll hear a lot of people discuss the benefits of an eight weight versus a nine weight. I fish both. I have both. I have some thoughts about that that I'm going to share. So an eight weight rod to me is like your seven foot medium action spinning or bait casting rod. It's a good all around rod. Um, not necessarily the best or most versatile rod on the market. Uh, but it is a good rod and a lot of people start with an eight weight and you'll look at a lot of the combos that manufacturers make they make an eight weight combo so they go from a five weight combo to an eight weight combo because eight there's a lot of people buy eight weights one thing an eight weight can do that a nine weight can't do is an eight weight is also a good rod for throwing big streamers at trout and i'm talking big streamers i'm talking you know streamers that big i didn't put one out right now we'll talk about flies later a nine weight is really a little too heavy to throw big streamers for trout. And you'll see the manufacturers, when they make an all water rod, water for a rod for fresh or salt water, the heaviest rod they'll make will be an eight weight for the all water. And many manufacturers, the lightest rod they make for salt water is a six weight. Um, there used to be some companies that made five weight salt water fly rods, but they moved away from that. So a nine weight rod is a good all-around rod. It's good if you're in the Northeast for striper fishing. It's good for fishing in Louisiana for redfish. If you're in the Keys, it's a good bonefish rod. It's a good small tarpon rod. It's a good largemouth rod for big largemouth, even though some people will use an eight weight for that. It will let you throw a bigger fly. A nine weight is going to be better in the wind than an eight weight. I will tell you that a nine weight, I wouldn't want to throw a nine weight if for trout, cold water trout, freshwater trout, rainbows, browns, um, steelhead. If you're throwing big streamers, I'd rather use an eight weight. So if you tell me that, Jim, I live in Colorado or Wyoming or New Mexico or Montana or Idaho and 90% of my fishing is going to be for trout and I might take a trip down to the coast to Texas to fish for redfish or Louisiana fish for redfish or maybe to go to Hawaii and fish for bonefish. Um, I would say get an eight weight. You're probably going to be happier with an eight weight throwing it for carp and big streamers for trout. If you don't spend that much time on the salt, it will do fine. You are a little limited in the size flies you can throw with it. And also if you're in a really strong wind, it might not perform as well as a nine weight. But that goes back to where do you live and where do you spend the most time fishing? If you live in um, any other state and you say, you know, I might be in the Northeast fishing for stripers. I might be in Louisiana fishing for big redfish and big jack or belly. I might go to the uh, Keys to fish for bonefish and tarpon. Uh, I might go to Hawaii fish for bonefish. I might go to the Texas coast. I don't know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be all over. I just want one rod that I can do anything with. I might go to Lake Fork and fish for big largemouth. I might go to Lake Okeechobee and fish for big largemouth. Um, if you want one rod that's going to do all those different things for you, then I would go with a nine weight rod. And really, unlike the five weight, you need to be able to throw a nine weight or have a nine weight that's going to support your ability to cast up to 80 feet. Usually you don't make 80 foot casts with a five weight, but an 80 foot or 90 foot cast is a realistic cast in salt water. Um, I'd rather not cast that far. Me personally, if I can throw 40 or 50 feet and catch a fish, I'll do that. But if I have to make a 90 foot cast, I want a rod that will support that. So when you look at nine weight rods, unlike the five weight rods, just about any nine weight and eight weight rod is gonna have a full whale's grip. It's gonna have the swelling here. 
it's going to have the swelling here. That's very important. It's going to have an anodized reel seat. Um, if you don't use a rod in salt water, the anodized reel seat is not as important. But if you're in salt water, you need an anodized reel seat for the corrosion resistance. You'll see there's the ring here. Most or some of your freshwater rods, five weight, your lighter rods, only have a single uplocking ring. And for a five weight rod in fresh water, you'll be fine with a single uplocking ring. In salt water, though, you'll see that there's a second ring, a second up locking ring, and that's important. It gives the reel a little more secure footing on the rod. And when you have a big fish and you put a lot of leverage on the fish, you don't want that reel to wobble or move. Also, just about every nine weight will have a fighting butt. Um, these are very handy. You put them in your belly when you're fighting a big fish or on your side. These fighting butts can get too big. I had a 10 weight one time. I was fighting a barracuda with it and I was wearing a shirt like this that was a little loose and the fighting butt kept hanging when I got the fish to the boat. I got the fighting butt caught in the flap of the shirt. So I don't wear this type shirt when I fly fish anymore. I use um, a long sleeve shirt that doesn't have a collar and doesn't have the flap and all these pockets and everything. It's just a fishing shirt. Um, but I do like a fighting butt, but they can get too big. So just keep that in mind. The one thing too... I like a four-piece rod. Um, I've had two-piece rods. I've had three-piece rods. I like a four-piece rod for the portability, although they are a little heavier. Now, there are some fly rods that have come out. Let's see if you can see that. You see this does not have an insert in the eye. Those inserts in the eyes can pop out. Most fly rods have the insert in the eye, the stripping guide. The first guide is called the butt guide or the stripping guide. Most fly rods do have the insert here. And they can pop out. It's not out of reason. <clears throat> this does not have the stripping, the insert. So when the fly line comes through, it is a little louder. But that's one less thing to break if you travel a lot. Uh, TFO makes a model like this. And then Scott makes a model like this. And also, this particular snake uh, stripping guide flexes. See? comes goes back in place. So there's less chance of crushing it when you travel. Those aren't mandatory but they're nice if you travel a lot. Like I said, four piece, nine weight, match with a nine weight, weight forward floating line and the appropriate leader and flies. Now, the one thing about a saltwater rod, you're an eight weight or nine weight. And I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna say nine weight from here on out. Like I say, you guys who live in the West and have the real trout fishing, um, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, New Mexico, you might want to stop at eight weight if you're not going to saltwater fish that much. Um, but I'm just going to say your second rod's a nine weight. The reel is important in these bigger rods. Um, if you hook a 20 pound Jack Crivelli, which I have done, you're going to need a good drag. Um, if you hook a big bonefish, you're going to need a good drag. If you hook a big tarpon, you're going to need a good drag. Um, I've hooked fish in salt water that I could not turn. They just, they took my fly and they left. And I couldn't stop them. I couldn't slow them down. I don't know if they were big jacks, big tarpon. Might have been a big stingray for all I know. I have caught stingrays on the fly. And a six-foot stingray um, will, will spool you. Um, that's one thing about a nine-weight versus an eight-weight. If you hook a 20-pound jack or a 40-pound redfish um, or a end up hooking a big ray of any any type, a cow nose ray, stingray, um, a big bonefish. You're gonna wish, well not necessarily bonefish, but any of those very large fish, a bigger tarpon, say a tarpon over 40 pounds, you're gonna wish you had a nine weight rod over an eight weight rod. It's better for the fish, it's easier on you, even though casting a nine weight rod all day is harder. <clears throat> when you hook a really big fish, that's gonna be easier. Now, there's two kind of drags. Um, there's three kind of drags, excuse me. There's a click drag, there's a disc drag, and then there's disc drags that are sealed. Some disc drags are exposed, where the drag itself is cork, it's a disc, and it's exposed, it's not enclosed. Um, if you can afford it, I would say get a sealed drag. And a sealed drag, when you take it apart, is kind of boring. Inside this casing, a bunch of discs. Usually they're Rulon, Teflon, 
and stainless steel. Some people use cork, rulon, and stainless steel. Some people just use cork and stainless steel. And as you tighten the drag, it compresses against that disc. The nice thing about a seal drag, if you're wade fishing and you drop your reel in the water, if it's sealed, your drag integrity is going to be maintained. Your drag's not going to overrun. Your drag, your inner compartment, you know, the inner compartment of your drag mechanism is not going to get um, risk corrosion. If you wade fish in salt water, which is very effective and you need to be careful when you do it. We'll talk about that in another video. Um, I've had a, caught a lot of fish wade fishing and it has some close calls wade fishing. A sealed disc drag is better. And of course you want bar stock aluminum, machined aluminum. You don't want cast. Um, a cast reel, if that's all you can afford, you know, that's fine. But like I said, I'd rather see you get a bar stock machined aluminum reel um, at the same price point than a cast reel that comes with a combo. If you fall on something hard with a cast reel, you can break the reel. If you fall on something hard with a machined aluminum reel, you might ding or scratch the reel, but you're not going to break it. I have fallen and I have dropped reels and I have um, scuffed them up, but not broken any because I don't buy cast reels. The other thing too is the nice thing about your higher quality reels that the spool comes off and you have a sealed drag, you can buy a spare spool and you can put a floating line on one and an intermediate sinking line on another. And there's many times in saltwater you're going to use an intermediate sinking line or some type of sinking line. Stripers in the northeast, if you're fishing the coast of Georgia, you're going to be throwing an intermediate line most of the time. South Carolina, um, you're going to use intermediate line some of the time. They have a lot of flats where you fish in shallow water. Florida, you're going to use a lot of um, floating lines, but there are some channels when you get down into the southern part of Florida, there's going to be some channels between the flats that you might want to throw a big uh, seducer or a big minnow imitation down into that deeper water, see what's cruising through there. So an intermediate or a sinking line is very helpful on your nine weight rig. Um, you don't need it for bonefish, uh, but for all the other types of fishing, uh, even on the West Coast, uh, sinking line is real handy. So the other thing about a reel, if you're going to get a spare spool, try to get a reel that when you take it apart, everything stays attached to one side of the reel or the other. There's some really good reels, t bores where you take a little screw off here, and then you back it off here, and then you take another screw off here. You don't want any loose parts when you're swapping spools because... That's an easy way to lose something. I'm very klutzy. I'm the most klutzy person my wife knows. And I try to keep things simple and clean and neat. And when you're in a boat, or especially if you're wade fishing, or you're fishing in a kayak, if you're going to swap spools between a floating line or a sinking line, you don't want to have a spool that there's little parts associated with taking it apart and they drop off somewhere and you can't find them. Then you can't put your reel back together. Of course, you can avoid that by buying a second reel. But if you're only going to have one reel, get a sealed drag, something that's very waterproof, something that if it dunks under the water, if you're in your kayak or wade fishing, um, you're not going to have water into your drag, which is going to decrease your drag performance and increase your risk for corrosion. And have it spools that all the parts stay together. So all you have to do is slide it on, line it up, which I just did. All I had to do with this Nautilus reel, slide it in, line it up twist this little knob down to tighten it up and I'm done and lowest chance to lose anything and I can go from a sinking line to a floating line. Eventually you'll want to get a floating line. Start off with a weight forward floating line but eventually you'll want to get some kind of intermediate sinking or full sinking line for your fishing in uh, salt water. And even bass fishing, there's times in bass fishing where you might want to use a sinking line for big bass in deeper water. Um, so salt water is very demanding. One thing you have to think about when you look at your fly rod for salt water, and why I do like a nine weight, you know, if you're gonna fish bonefish in the Bahamas, you might use a fly as small as this. This is probably a number six or a number, yeah, this is a number six or a number four. It has little tiny dumbbell eyes on it. There's just nothing to this fly. You can cast this. You can cast this on a five weight rod. We talked about using your five weight in salt water. You could literally throw this fly on a five weight rod. And if you go to Mexico, 
um, the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, the bonefish there are really small and you could use a five weight rod and same for the Bahamas. You know, there's people, um, I've talked to people who've gone down to four weights in the Bahamas. So you could actually take your nine weight and your five weight to the Bahamas. And if it's really small, really calm, and the, you're in some small bonefish, you could take and use this little fly on your five weight, or you could throw it on a nine weight. Um, but with your nine weight, unlike your five weight, you might go up into the New England states or mid-Atlantic states and fish for stripers and throw something this big. Large set of dumbbell eyes. This is a half and half. You can purchase these at stores. Remember I told you we're only going to talk about flies you can purchase at stores. So you might be throwing something this big. Throwing this on a nine weight is not a problem. And this might be something that you throw on an intermediate or a sinking line if the stripers are down deep. This all this fly works on snook. It works on redfish. It works on a lot of different fish. But you can see that's a big fly. It's a two alt hook, big lead eyes, a lot of feathers, a lot of bucktail, a lot of flash. Um, this will throw much better on a nine weight than an eight weight. And then you talk about fishing for bass. I showed you this in the other video. Um, this is a lefty's deceiver. It comes in all different kind of colors. Um, this too is on a two alt hook. A lot of bucktail, a lot of feathers, some peacock on the top. I tied this one which I promise you I wasn't going to talk about anything I tied, but you can buy Lefty Deceivers in any of your fly shops um, and your big box stores like Bass Pro and Cabela's. They carry these too. Great fly for saltwater, great fly for freshwater. But that fly there will also be easier to throw. A big Lefty's Deceiver on a 2 alt hook or a 3 alt or a 4 alt hook will be much easier to throw on a 9 weight than it will an 8 weight. If you live in the New England states and you're going to striper fish, but if you're going to pike fish, or musky fish if you're in the Midwest and you do some musky fishing you really are going to want a nine weight because you know you might be throwing a four aught or five aught size hook for pike and musky I've caught some small pike on a really big fly I didn't think they'd take the fly it was on a four aught hook um it was just a modified deceiver with artificial hair instead of uh, feathers in Vermont and those those pike weren't that big, but that fly was huge. Like I said, it was on a big hook, and it, I threw on a nine weight all day with an intermediate line because it was the fall. There was a lot of leaves on the water. So that's your second rod. It's a nine foot nine weight. Unless you live in Colorado or New Mexico or Wyoming or Montana or Idaho, one of those big trout states, and you're not going to hardly ever go to the salt. You just might go to the salt, and you're going to throw big streamers for trout. Then you can go with an eight weight. But for the rest of us who travel all over the place, who are going to fish big bass, Lord knows what you hook in salt water. You can hook any kind of sea monster. Um, and you had the fish in the wind. Um, the one thing for me, because when I schedule a fishing trip, I don't get to reschedule just because there's wind. A lot of guys who are professional or have a lot of vacation time or, or are fluent, you know, if the weather's not perfect, they'll cancel their trip. I don't have that luxury when I schedule a trip, whether I'm driving or flying, I don't usually get to reschedule it, so I have to go. And if there's a 25 knot wind, I still have to go, um, or I don't fish. So I won't fish in lightning, but rain, big wind, I will fly fish and all that. I I go when I have to go. When I have time, I go. Because um, like all of us, we have jobs and we have to go when we can go. So a nine weight is going to perform better in the wind. Um, you want an anodized reel seat, you want a nine weight, f uh, weight forward floating fly line, you want a, um, leader. We'll have another video on leaders and flies that I take with me for salt water. Um, get a good machined aluminum fly reel, eight or nine weight or nine and 10 weight or nine weight. Um, 150 yards of back end at a minimum. For your five weight, 50 yards of back end, 75 yards of back end is probably fine. But with your nine weight, you want a reel that can hold 150 yards of back end at a minimum and the nine weight fly line without rubbing without rubbing on the supports. Um, I would recommend a sealed drag, and the better it's sealed, the better it is in case you dunk it in the water. And I would also rec recommend a reel that you can swap the spool without having a bunch of spare parts laying around. So one day you can put your um, intermediate or your sinking fly line on there because you will need that down the road as you fly fish more. I'm putting my reel back together. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. So we'll have a follow-up video on the flies I carry 
when I go fly fishing in salt water anywhere in the country. I have some I have some basic flies I always carry no matter where I go, no matter what the fish are biting on. I have a set of flies I always take with me anywhere I go. And that's for bass and that's for salt water. So we'll have a video on that. We'll talk a little bit more about leaders. Mad River Outfitters, their YouTube channel has some great videos on leaders. Um, we'll talk a little bit about saltwater leaders. We'll talk a little bit about leaders for sinking lines. And we'll go over some flies. So we'll do that on a future video. So thank you for your time. Hope this helped. So now we get you set up with a five weight, nine foot five weight, with a five weight reel, five weight uh, weight forward floating line with 75 yards of backing on that reel, 50 yards, 75 yards of backing. And we got you set up with a nine weight unless you live in those trout states and you don't think you're going to fly fish a lot or saltwater fish a lot. So you're going to go with a nine weight and that's going to cover you for most of your inshore fly fishing needs with a good reel, maybe a second spool eventually, and a weight forward floating line. So that's all for this video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for your time.